do you remember that time where Jesus called the Canaanite woman a dog? You know, called her a bee. Der was derogatory towards the woman. And then healed her after she schooled him on what love really is. You remember the video I did about that? Well, today on TikTok, Thinker was doing, is doing a live. And in her live, she was discussing that very same point. She brought up some things that I missed, I'd forgotten about the dealing in dealing with that story. So let's break those things down today so that you have even more information about how derogatory this God can be. Now we know that this God is derogatory because he likes to call people dogs. So when you look here at Revelations 22, and he talks about blessed are those who have washed and they have the rights to the tree of life. And I know that's a whole nother discussion about rights to the tree of life that we talked about before. But have rights to the tree of life. But he, what do you say? And they are able to enter the gates. He said that those outside the gates, mm, the outside are the dogs and sorcerers and fornicators and murderers. He likes to call people dogs. It's one thing to call people based something based on actions that they commit. Okay, you kill somebody, you're a murderer. You you pr practice sorcery, you're a sorcerer. Okay, I can deal with that. But I'm going to call you a dog. Hmm. That's a degrading remark. Now back to the Jesus part of it all. Of calling. That was supposed to be Jesus too. But to the Jesus part of it all. Of calling this woman a dog. So in the Mark version of the story. And let me put my glasses on. Make sure I got them right. On the Mark version of the story. There's something. There's a few things that I missed out on the video. That I did that Thinker brought up. And it was absolutely great. And I'm going to add a little bit more to what she was talking about. Now, in the Mark version, he said, now the woman, when, at verse 26, well, let's go above that first. He said, but, he said, and from there, he rose and went away to the region of Tyre and Sidon. And he entered a house and would not have anyone know it. So in this version, and we're going to see this in the Matthew version, in this version, he enters a house in Tyre, Sidon. And he doesn't want any, he goes and no one knows, he doesn't want anyone to know that he's there, Right? When we look at the Matthew version, it's going to be different. Because in the Matthew version, it says that he got up, he went to Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a Canaanite woman from the region came out and cried, Have mercy on me, son of God, son of David. But he did not answer her word, and the disciples came and begged him. So in the first time, in Mark, the disciples are not mentioned. In this time, I mean, in, Matthew, in Mark, the disciples are not mentioned. But in Matthew, we have the mentioning of the disciples. In Mark, he goes into a house. In Matthew, he's seemingly just walking around. You know, he got some walk around money. So he's just walking around. I can understand if we was trying to decipher what color someone is wearing. Is he wearing pink? Is he wearing fuchsia? What is he wearing? But there is nothing that we, we cannot say he was by himself or he wasn't by himself. Those are contradictions. Those are some misreadings going on. That's not what some eyewitnesses are going to say. They're going to say whether or not somebody was there or somebody wasn't there. That's a conflict. But also, he went into the house. He was outside. There is no confusion about whether or not somebody was in a house or somebody was outside. Those are things that are very distinctive, that there should not be confusion. If this God inspired this book, if God uh, wrote this book through man, then man should have the same story on certain aspects of it. But, of course, they say then eyewitnesses may have different stories and have slight variables based on their viewpoint. Well, here's the thing. If he went to the house by himself, there are no eyewitnesses. But if the disciple was walking around with him, they're eyewitness. Because according to this one, the eyewitnesses, the, the, the disciples were there when he began speaking to the woman, right? Whereas in the, whereas in the Mark version... It says, but immediately a woman with little with a little daughter was possessed by an unclean spirit heard heard of him and came fell down at his feet. There are no disciples involved here. There are no disciples around. That's something that would be a contradiction of the two stories because they are they, they don't validate each other. That's something we should know. And he's in a house. We should we should easily know the difference between you know that. These stories should be the same, basically, when it comes to that. But let's continue. And this is a very important part that I did not think about when I did this, did the other previous video. Now, the woman was a Greek. Who? A Syrophoenician by birth. 
and begged him to cast out the demons. That's Mark, identifying her as a Greek. Now, the book of Mark was written only to validate that Jesus, um, the book of Mark was written to the Jews, I should say, to the Jews. It was not written for Gentiles. It was not written to Gentiles. It was only written to the Jews to recognize Jesus as the Messiah, right? So when he said that she was a Greek, a Sipho, uh, a Sipho, a Sipho, 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 I'm saying it's so messed up. She was Greek, right? And that Sipho Phoenicians just say she is equal to Canaanite. So she was a Greek Canaanite woman, right? And then he goes on and he calls her a dog because he said, let the children first be fed for it is right. For is it not right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs? You know, that's why he called her a dog, a female dog, since she's a woman. That's why he called her a dog. He was derogatory towards her in that regard. So that's why he called her a dog. In the Matthew version, it's different. It's different. It specifically says that, and behold, a Canaanite woman. So why is there a difference in the Matthew version? See, Matthew was written to prove that Jesus was the son of God and was for everybody. So the writer of Matthew, who was most like a Hellenistic Jew, was saying that, Josephus was saying that she was just Canaanite and took away the idea that she was Greek because at the time frame of this writing which would have been late first century uh, CE second late early second century at the latest the writer here knows that he cannot offend the Romans he cannot offend the Greek people because this was at a time frame where they were under the control of the Roman Empire and if they had offended the Romans and offended the Greeks because although Romans didn't really care for Greeks individually they looked at the Greek um, antiquity and being able to speak Greek and write Greek as something of a higher class so they couldn't offend the Greek people so Matthew took out the fact that she was a Greek woman and just made her a Canaanite woman because the Romans looked at Canaanites in the same way that they looked at the Israelite people, that they were beneath them, that they, uh, yes, could be Roman citizens, but they weren't true Romans. Uh, you know how that feels as a black American, you know, you, you, you're in a, you, you can be a black American, but you can't be a true American. So Matthew changes it and takes that out for political reasons. Now, if this book is being written by the one true God, he wouldn't care about nations and how they feel because this part is all, all, all about feelings as to why she is then just a Canaanite woman in the, in the Matthew version of the story, right? Now, the other part, is the argument that they was having with the young man and 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 this one it hurt my it hurt my it hurt my spirit it hurt my spirit because the young man was saying that the woman was willing to take being degraded by Jesus because he had something that she wanted right because she desired to have uh, her daughter heal so she was willing to be uh, called a female dog to get what she wanted and they asked him the question, would you sell out black people to get what you want? And he stuttered and fumbled around for about three, four minutes before he finally said no. But I believe that most Christians will sell out people in order to get what they want. And it's, it's, it is the same as this one young lady was saying, if, if the people at the grocery store have what you want, but they said, come on in here, N-word, and you can get what you want, then he would go in there and he would take that because he needs their food. And that's how a lot of these people are. I would never degrade, allow some, anyone to degrade me just because they may have something that I want. You can keep your shit, basically. Oh, and last thing before I go, if you notice at the end, it says that after the young lady was healed, the woman just went home and found her child lying in bed and the demon gone. And in the Matthew version, it says, Then Jesus answered her and said, O oh, woman, great is your faith, and be it done as you have desired. And the daughter was healed immediately. In one instance, it seems like the daughter wasn't there. In another instance, it seems like the daughter is there. In one instance, Jesus is remarking about her faith. And in another instance, he's not remarking about her faith. It's all based on how the preacher want to preach it. But what do you guys think? Comment, like, subscribe, and share. And always remember.